Hello, I'm Chaplain Jared. Welcome back to the Christian Meditation Podcast, Episode 16. Have mercy on me, a sinner. A guided Christian meditation on Luke 18, 10 through 14. As a hospice chaplain and a previous ICU chaplain at a busy hospital, my purpose in making this podcast is to help you find more peace in your life to be open to be changed by the Spirit of God. The flow of this meditation will go as follows. We'll begin with the relaxation to reduce distraction so that we can focus primarily on the Word of God in the reading of the Scripture. Then we'll reflect on this meaning, pray to God for additional guidance, and then reflect on the answers that He sends, and then visualize how we can take action and change our lives based on this answer. So I invite you to get comfortable for about 20 minutes without doing chores or driving, so you can really focus on this message. So what you're trying to do basically is you're trying to remove distractions with this relaxation. So I invite you, if you feel safe to do so, close your eyes now. I found that it's easiest to relax not by blocking out all our senses, but by allowing them to just be. As you prepare your heart for this fast of attention from the world, listen to the sounds around you. Listen to the soothing sounds of the sea as the waves gently churn. As you become more aware of this moment, you allow your focus to become more gentle. You notice that your breathing is gently expanding. You slowly bring in all the fresh air around you and your stomach expands. Really breathe from your belly. Perhaps you can try matching the count that I do with your breathing. Breathing in for the count of five, then gently pausing, then breathing out for five, as follows. Breathe in, two, three, four, five. Then pause. Breathe out, two, three, four, five. Pause. Breathe in. Two, three, four, five. Pause. Breathe out. Two, three, four, five. Find some slow cadence that works for you. As you breathe slowly, you feel your body inflex and all your muscles begin to relax. As you realize that you are a creation of God, air fills your body and releases all of the tension inside and your muscles relax. With each passing breath, you relax more and more, preparing to receive this message from the Bible that God has for you. As I read through this scripture, keep your heart, mind, and ears open to the message God has for you. 
This is one of the parables of Jesus, and it's found in Luke chapter 18, verses 10 through 14. I'll first read in the King James Version. Two men went up to the temple to pray, the one a Pharisee and the other a publican. The Pharisee stood and prayed, thus with himself, God, I thank thee that I am not as other men are, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. I fast twice a week, and I give tithes of all that I possess. And the publican, standing afar off, would not lift up so much as his eyes to heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other, for every one that exalteth himself shall be abased, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. What message did you receive from Scripture? Think about what message God has for you in this scripture. Pay attention now as I read it through again, this time in the New International Version, to give an additional perspective. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood by himself and prayed, God, I thank you that I am not like other people, robbers, evildoers, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week and give a tenth of all that I get. But the tax collector stood at a distance. He would not even look up to heaven, but beat his breast and said, God, have mercy on me a sinner. I tell you that this man, rather than the other, went home justified before God. For all those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and all those who humble themselves will be exalted. What thought or idea or word stuck out to you in this scripture? What is God trying to tell you? What can you learn from this scripture and from God in this moment? Who do you identify with more in this scripture? I find it an important distinction to separate the ideas of shame and humbly admitting our sin before God. Take a moment to reflect on maybe some of the purposes God has in this scripture. Why does Jesus tell this story? Not only why does he tell it, but why does he want us to acknowledge our sinful nature? How is acknowledging our sinful nature different than shame for shame's sake? Is it possible to reject shame? while still embracing humility before God. In my work, it seems that people who experience shame fatigue often misinterpret messages like this one and then go on to see God as a being who desires us to feel immense shame. 
don't think this is accurate. I would argue that shame is the adversary's counterfeit for a grieved conscience. Open yourself up to the idea that your sin is egregious, yet at the same time, through his infinite love, God knows exactly how to handle that. I firmly feel that as we learn to engage in our guilt in a healthy way, that our artificial and inflated shame will decrease in most situations. Let God extend His great mercy to you. Many times throughout Scripture, God encourages us to repent. If you would like to deepen your reflection on this, see episode 9 of this podcast, which focuses on Isaiah 53, talking about, with His stripes we are healed. Also in the last episode, an important idea came up of us not deceiving ourselves. crucially important that we are honest before God and we acknowledge our fault while at the same time allowing His mercy to change us as we continually return to Him. Continue breathing deeply as you acknowledge your sin before God and allow His love to penetrate your heart and destroy your sin. Make your heart ready for Him to replace your stony heart with a heart of flesh. Please join me in prayer. Holy Father, we approach Thee in humility, acknowledging our sins, acknowledging also the greatness of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, Thy Son. Open our hearts to a way in which we can receive this remission of sin through thy infinite mercy. And please allow us to feel of thy peace and thy spirit and thy love, which is great. I invite you to continue to pray I invite you to pray for His loving Spirit to wash away your shame. I'll give you a couple more seconds. All right. Now, as we've prayed to God for guidance, for forgiveness, imagine sitting in His love as it pours over you and conquers your sin and washes away your shame.
I'll give you a couple more seconds. All right. Now, before I go on to the visualization, I want to say something that I hope you don't find as morbid, but in my work in hospice, I talk to people, many of who know they are about to die. They begin to reflect on their life, and it finally sets in. The life is short. I consider it a blessing to have spent so much time in this place with people. For better or worse, this life is the only one you will ever have. This is the life that is teaching you what you really need to learn. Which above all is how to be reliant on God. As you realize that it's only through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ that we can overcome the world, we begin to truly connect with a new and eternal hope. Imagine that with God's mercy, you can change this life that you have. And with the Spirit of God, you have everything you need to change and become the best version of yourself possible. So I want you to visualize the change that you have felt as you reflected on this scripture. Imagine concretely what can you do today and tomorrow. Make it more specific than just to be better or to stop sinning. Choose a concrete action that you can do today or tomorrow. I'll give you a couple more seconds. All right. Thank you so much for joining me. I release a new episode every Sunday morning at one in the morning. So if you felt peace as you listen to this podcast, please share it. That's the reason why I do it. You can get more information about the podcast or to get a blog post about this episode by going to christianmeditationpodcast.com. That's all one word. And you can send me a message through the site. I would love to hear how you are experiencing this podcast. As you learn to acknowledge both your own sin and God's mercy, you will find greater meaning in life and find contentment. The contentment Paul talked about, which I did in episode one. I know that as you do this, you will find the peace that only God can bring. Meditation is a great tool like exercise or taking vitamins or anything else that changes our body, but ultimately the only thing that can provide us lasting and eternal peace is God and being right with God. He's shown us how to do that. I know that as you do this, you will find peace in His Spirit. And this I say in Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>